All right, the moment of truth, right? Moment of truth. But you can also look at like UFC. Twenty forty one. We got the number right. Yep. And Boom! Done. That was Did. sick. Ray, tell me what's going on here. Uh, customers looking around right now. You got a customer have, looking around. Yep. But he loved me with three cards. Two rookies. One of them was an autograph and a Josh Allen prism auto. Is that tough a five? Gray. Tough gray, but. We're still interested. Why did he get a five? Ray's basically, this is the buying counter. And Ray basically is planted here all day long, just doing deals. Sometimes it's, you know, pink, auto, Josh Allen, rookie, graded. And, and sometimes it's just, you know, random, you know, jersey cards of not big people. But we take it all. But when so it comes that guy came to sell to you, and then he's walking around right now? He's walking around. He's looking around. He's most likely going to trade, he said, so... So is he going to turn those in for money and then just pick something out? I'm going to be offering him cash, or if he's anything, anything he likes, we're going to make a trade, yeah. Is there a big difference between the cash you're going to offer versus a trade? There's, there's usually a 10% difference. 10%? Um, they usually take the store credit. And, you know, like kids in a candy store, when you have that much money, and you have this much to shop, like, dude, you see these showcases here? I mean, we bought every single card in these showcases, and Ray's just excellent at what he does. And he does this all day long. All day long. I'm grinning back there. Let's, let's just say you, I was selling you this card, yeah. and you gave me 35 trade. Mm -hmm. yeah. So I would, I could go out there and get 35 dollars worth of stuff. Yeah. yeah, and for the most part, a lot of people, what they'll do is they'll, they'll pick up like 20, uh, 30 cards and trade from us. We'll just bank all the trade. We'll give them a big uh, note. You have X amount trade. And they just go have fun and go buy a bunch of cards. Most important part of the deal is, is being on the same page on value. You yeah. might not be on the same page uh, as far as like percentage. You might not be on the same page uh, as far as a bunch of other factors. But if we can both value the card the same, if we both say it's an 8K card, we should be able to work on the deal. Alex, got Alex here. Yeah. Um, end up City and Timor, full case. So you, this someone brought this to you, so you're yeah, next. Yeah. So they bring it to you, and then you kind of mm -hmm. bring it to Ryan to kind of give the yeah, official decision. Exactly. I come to Ryan, and Ryan gives me a price, and then I go back and see if they like it, and then it goes from there. Do you usually have a point where you like you don't have to come to Ryan, you just know to buy something, or does it depend? If it's lower end stuff, we have a spreadsheet that we go off of. But if it's the higher end stuff, it usually has to go by Ryan first. For consistency purposes. Look at this. He's checking right now. Yeah. So what are they? Two, three hundred? Like closer to two? Yeah. You probably want to pay what on them? Well, I can I can pick them up all day for two sixty. Um, oh, true. something I'd want to price at 300 bucks. Leave myself like 30% on something like so that. So what would you pay on that? Uh, probably 70%. So probably want to come in at like 215, 220. Because you can get them for how much? I can get them for 260. Yeah. So um, if you get that, I mean, that's what that's this like. Is, this is also like wholesale, kind of like business to business. Yeah. If it's, you get them for 215, that's a great if deal. If you get them though. for 215, it's a good deal. So I'll, I'll tell Alex 215, and if that doesn't work, then 220. Cool. And if that doesn't work, you should them off. I try not to let wax walk, but if it gets to a point where it just doesn't make sense, it just doesn't make sense, you know? Yeah. yeah. It doesn't make a difference if that's not sealed, right? Not really. If it was sealed, would it be a difference? In price? Yeah. That's Ryan's call. We, we, don't, uh, we don't do much seal case-wise. Most of the stuff we uh, just box out. So it doesn't really matter. It doesn't really matter to me. They might want a premium because it's sealed, but to me, I just try and buy, I just try and buy it as uh, just like I'm buying the boxes. Um, so on those, Alex, you can do uh, uh, 95 a box on that. And if that doesn't work, you can go to 100. And if that doesn't work, then... It's not happening. We'll pass. <laughs> yeah. Sweet. For 54, the total came out to 53.40, and they asked to do 5,400, and we took the deal. Boom. There it is. That was so easy. So we're talking about like the buy-in process. So you come in here a lot to sell your cards? I do. I'm at least in here probably a few times or more a week. And, uh, so why do you decide to sell through here versus anywhere else? You know, Ryan's very simple. You know, he gives you anywhere 70 to 80% of the dollar. There's, you know, it's either I'll take it or not. Very easy, simple process. I would say probably about 98% of the time we do deals with cases and uh, singles. So it's real simple. He's a good guy. I get along with Rob and Steve and the rest of the gang here. So I like coming here. Great cards. Always brand new things in here. Um, I've been coming, wow. With, for over 15 years, yeah. 15 years? At least. Probably, well, for sure over 10. Regular, yeah. Yeah, regularly over, over the past year and a half, yeah. couple of years for Absolutely. sure. Yeah. Oh, Absolutely, yeah. So what are you yeah. looking to turn in today? Uh, today we got some Panini 101. Um, did you open a lot of that? Basketball, I did. I did a lot of cases of Panini 101 basketball cards. And then some WWE wrestling cards, which the newest stuff in about the last week. Got some autos and some uh, 
some singles, some color cards here. So, so. you're going to turn those in? Yeah, I'm going to see what we can do a deal with Ryan. So, Ryan, show me, uh, well, like, give me an example. Like, let's just run through a couple of these. What are you yeah. looking to buy here? Well, I mean, ba the first thing is, like, you got to take this pile of this mess right here. Like, this is, you know, it's kind of all over the place. I don't, I don't know what's in here, but I'll just rifle through this stuff and just kind of put it in, kind of put it in um, estimation. estimations on, like, you know, numbered stuff, stuff that's not numbered, okay, numbered, autos, uh, autos, autos. Not numbered, autos, numbered. So I'll just kind of sort like that. Like this will go in its own pile. This is kind of a, you know, it's a unique card that'll get its own stack. Carl Anthony Towns, you know, is in the playoffs. I'll put that off to the side. Scotty Barnes auto, that's pretty sweet. So I'll just, I'll just kind of stack stuff up based on like, you know, type how badly I want it. If I want to put an individual price on it or if I just want to kind of put it in like a bulk group. Um, here, there's not too many cards, so I'll probably go through and, for the most part, individual. I'll tag up a lot of the autos. You know, like you know, Jason Kidd auto. It's probably fifty to seventy-five bucks. I'll value and I'll tag it up. Cole Anthony. Um, a lot of this wrestling stuff, I'm not super super familiar with. Like I know Triple H obviously is a good one. Uh, values fluctuating on this one because the product came out pretty recently. So you're going to see a lot of high sales from about a week ago, and you're going to see some lower sales probably as of today, as of yesterday. So how do you know what to offer on like that when you look it up? And if it's I, I like to run? I like to get a number from the past couple days. So if I can't get a number from the past couple get, couple days, I'll either skip on it or I'll put what I'll put what I think it would go for today. I mean, if you look at Prism WWE as a whole, like as an index, everything's cut you know probably 30 or 40 percent since release day yeah. and that's just that's just the way it is on this type of stuff stuff gets a lot of hype at, at first and then starts to taper off i mean the boxes have dropped you know 20 percent since they came out so people still like the stuff but the hype the hype is kind of waning a little bit on it um but you also have to remember it is a, it is a debut product so it's the first time they've ever done prism wwe will it stand the test of time will it bounce back after a certain level and start to go back up again i mean that's that's something to keep in mind as well mm. so i don't mm. mind picking the stuff up i just like to pick it up to where i'm not gonna you know i'm not gonna um get run over by a truck yeah. uh in like a week if i still have the car and now we know our numbers and uh if it's a certain number in mind that i feel it's good with i'll go with it Mar marlon does something interesting that not a lot of people do marlon will usually actually go through and figure out where he wants to be on this stuff beforehand do you have a price in your head yeah i do wait wait, wait we got to hear yeah, it i do I, well or do you want to wait till he does his thing and then we see what it says yeah we usually kind of do it that way but i mean do I, what you usually do yeah when marlon has an estimation in his head he does he's not going to tell me but i'm going to go through i'm going to finish this he'll know where he wants to be i'll know where sure. i want to be Right. Sometimes we split the difference, sometimes we don't. Right. Sometimes it goes his way, sometimes it goes my yeah. way. But on average, if you flip a coin, you know, 50 times, it should even out. It should be about 50%. Usually, the way it goes after 50 or so deals will will we'll be even basically after yeah. kind of after kind of splitting the difference. And sometimes I'll I'll, I'll and uh, I'll show the Brian the numbers. I'll lose on things, but next time we do something, there's a game. Yeah. So I kind of look at that yeah. way, and it's all about building the relationship and keeping things consistent. So. And so mine's pretty quick. It's so like the first card you're looking up, what is it? Um, I'm going for the Alexa Bliss, the so color blast. The color blast. So, there's, so there's, 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 nothing there's, there. there's absolutely nothing. So I use a tool on card letter called Sales History, which I really like. It gives me my slab sales. It gives me uh, auction sales. It gives me. It just acts like therapy, but it also gives me the auction house sales. So I really like that. If nothing comes up, I'll kind of just check to see what's listed on eBay if there's anything. So there's one up for 3,200. There's a couple up for 4,500. 32 OBO. So I'll check eBay just to see if I missed anything. Um, so there you go. There was. Sold, there's a there one was. sold listing. So there's a sold listing at twenty at twenty eight hundred bucks. Is that with Peak? Is that how you got the price? This is uh, an extension that actually Alt provides. So I, I use I use basically everything. So Alt, Alt has an extension with eBay that'll show me the best the best offer accepted. Cool. Um, instead of me having to go to one thirty point, um, then usually I'll just check Terapeak just to make sure that the sales there. So the sales on Terapeak. And I'll just look at I'll just look at the other the other sales. So Asina. Asina did twenty four. Twenty four. So that. That kind of tells me that that's kind of trouble trouble in the air on the bliss because he's like the biggest name. He's the biggest name, right? Brock Lesnar did twenty six, um, Big E did fourteen, Roman Reigns did three, uh, Charlotte Flair did three. So it kind of tells me that like three thousand is like the ceiling on a WWE color blast right now. Um, so for me to go off of this sale is is probably pretty tough for me to value this card at twenty eight hundred, just seeing what I'm seeing. Um, and you can see, you know, August or April, April 10th, 3,500. The peak, yeah. And then April 15th, 20, 2,400 on bids. Um, and then what I'll do is I'll usually go in here and just check the bids. So oh, yeah, the guy so. that won it had 6,500 feedback. 
um, which is usually a pretty good sign that it's going to get paid for. Not it does it's not foolproof. Nothing nothing is foolproof when you're pricing things, but um, that'll kind of tell me that okay. I, I see Goldberg did 23, April 10th. I'll come back to this. What I'll do is I'll just tag it with with the sale. And then uh, that'll kind of remind me, okay, it did 2,800. Then I got to keep in mind that Asina j just sold for 2,500. That might be low. I I'm not sure, but I do have to take that into account when, when I'm pricing this card. So I I'll put this on there as like a little reminder. Cool. And do your, do your rapid fire. Just yeah. do what you usually do. So like, you don't even have yeah, to say anything. For sure. Boom, go I'll, through. I'll just run these really quickly. So he's going to run those. What's your like favorite part about this shop? You know, just that, uh, how Ryan will you know go through his, um, you know, looking at the... The last the last sales and things like that and how quick he is like the rain man numbers what's that rain man movie like tom cruise and then i, I get pretty quick in my head i've, I've kind of done my homework already as well and then to see how close we come as far as uh coming to what i want and see if we can work out a deal i think that's the that's the thing my process is the beginning of the numbers you guys have probably developed enough of a relationship where you really don't have to be that far off ah, absolutely yeah and like i said a lot of times um there's you know, it's I mean, you know, here's the number. Either we we like it or we don't. Sometimes we'll we'll plus or minus, but uh, other than that, I mean, I keep coming back because I'm I'm happy with our process that we yeah. did. 100%. So, um, yeah. You've already run those. I've already run the stacks. Was so quick. Five bucks, fifteen bucks, twenty-five bucks. And is that what you want to pay, or is that what they're going this for? This is what I want to pay. This is what I want to pay. This is these are just cash numbers that I that I want to uh, that oh, I want to throw on. Okay. Yeah. Usually I wouldn't I wouldn't comp like these hypers usually i can kind of bulk these hypers together but since there's only two i'm just gonna i'm just gonna run them really quickly if you got like a stack of 25 of those would you just make an offer would, price at that I point would, i would check two or three and then i would i would average it out and, and make an offer on, on a stack of that, at that so point. like for example that triple h you know yeah. it's going between five and ten what is your, going between five and ten so basic, what do you offer basically on that? i i i'm at a couple it's bucks. gonna be like three bucks right i'm at a couple bucks on a card like this um when you get under 10 bucks you can't really deal with percentages anymore at that point you really have to say how much labor is it going to take for me to get a ten dollar card up on eBay? It's going to take a decent amount of labor. I'm going to be paying, you know, if if the guy gets to thirty bucks with free shipping, I'm going to be shipping the card for free basically. Yeah. Um. So at that point, these are cards that you can't really comp. These are cards you just gotta know. I just want to pay two or three bucks. No, I'm not familiar with Cora Jade. I'm not exactly sure how much the rookie plays into effect with WWE, but I'm just going to check it. So like, let's see. I'm just, gonna I'm just, gonna assume it's like ten. Minutes. I'm gonna assume it's five dollars. Oh, higher okay. than I thought. So there's only four that have sold. Um, it's between what, 30 and 40? Around 30 bucks. I'm just going to hop on eBay really quickly and just see what the cheapest buy now is. Probably, I'll probably see what the cheapest buy now is. So it's like, you know, it's between 25 and 30. Um, there's one up on bids already at 15. 15 so so I, can she, assume, I can assume she's it's somewhat popular. I can assume it's. And you know what? It is a rookie. I don't know. Again, this might be a thing down the road. Um, but I'll just assume it's, I'll probably just throw like 22 on it. And on something like this, I'd have to be up between 55 and 60, just cause it's like what in that $20 range, you got to leave yourself like a decent amount of room. Yeah. Um, so, so this is something that I throw like 12 bucks on Yeah. and I'd probably list it for 30 or 25 and take an offer. And if I get 20 bucks for it, then I get 20 bucks for it. Um, yeah. And then these are, these are fairly simple. I mean, sometimes these get tricky because people love the new rookie sets there's, and there's only, you know, five or six sets out. Obviously, as time goes, if, if Scotty Barnes doesn't pan out, you know this is going to be a fifty or sixty card, fifty or sixty dollar card, just like everything else. So, what do you offer on that? Um, but on this, I'll go, I'll go through. You know, it looks like it was a redemption. Um, so I'll kind of just average everything out. None have sold, sold lower than two hundred, basically. But the physical copies are. The first two did nine hundred. Whether these were paid for or not, I'm not. On, these are also numbered to twenty five. So this one's numbered to one forty nine. Um, the last sale is 350 and a redemption popped at 415. And the redemptions are doing like what, 200? Actually, a, re a redemption to 149 a couple days ago did 415. And uh, the card itself that got redeemed two days ago did 350. So he's popular. I know this card's not going to sustain what it's, what it's doing right now. It's a card I basically value at. I could value it at the last count, but percentage wise, I'm going to want to be closer to like 60 points on something like this. Um, so I probably want to be around 200, 200 bucks on it. Yeah. Um, that leaves me enough room to where, you if know, you sold that for, if you put that up for 400, you'd be okay. Yeah. If I put this up for 400, I, I I'll probably, that might be an in-store sale. That might be an in-store sale. Yeah, for sure. Or an online. And if I, if I, it leaves me room, if I get offered 350 online after fees and everything, I'm netting 300 bucks, you know, I make a hundred on the card. If it sells, that's, that's, that's fine with me uh, on that. Um, I just don't. I don't typically like buying this kind of like Origins, Elite, 
stuff like that that has just come out, it's really tricky to buy these cards because because the price is. I mean, today out. is April sixteenth of twenty twenty two. If you check back on this card in two months, you know this part, it's card's gonna, probably gonna be worth. It's gonna bucks. be off season. It's or no, one hundred fifty bucks. It's gonna be one hundred fifty bucks. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. You've been coming here. What year did you start coming here? She probably way way more than ten years ago. So, I, you see all this card card boom stuff. How is it? Yeah. Like, did you ever expect something like this? No. When the main thing, I took like a break for probably the last um, before COVID, like a few years, and then all of a sudden. Uh, they said that it was booming during COVID, I guess, because people couldn't go out. They wanted something to do. So people that go couldn't go to the casinos and stuff like that started to buy more sports cards and cases. And that's where they took their money. And, and then I got involved then. And like Ryan kind of mentioned, about yeah, the last year and a half, I've been coming aggressively, yep. at least a few times more a week, selling cases and singles and buys and trades and things like that. I just got back from the Hayward Show, Vegas at the, M uh, the MGM and uh, getting ready for Delmar at the end of the month. And then yeah, we'll Burbank Sports Cards got um, there's an August, right? August. Oh, yeah, we'll August, be there. Courtyard. Let's go. Uh, Atlantic Let's City go. and New Jersey coming up in July for the National. And um, so, and Hayward. So it's been exciting. I, I enjoy it. It's fun for me. And uh, and that's why I keep doing it. And all of that, it's, it's, you know, because I do business credit and I teach people how to turn their credit into cash, I like to put a lot of my stuff on a credit card because there's no interest for 30 days. So I got that time frame to move cards without ever, you know, using my money to make money with. So. All right. The moment of truth, right? The moment of truth. So how I'll kind of run this is what I'll do is I'll just add everything up tell Marlon what the total is. So I'm really big on a number pad calculator. Love it. What is it called? I just use the number pad on, on the, oh, on number the calculator. Pad. Yeah, it's very, uh, whoop. it's very um, simple as opposed to like a traditional calculator. And I'm pretty quick on it. So I'll just run everything. So we're already at 1236. Cool. Quick question. Yeah. Did you put the F1 away? What F1 away? F1 that went into the showcases, the new arrivals. Somebody put a bunch of F1 in my basketball cases that were $200 cards on the top shelf. Okay. I'm just trying to double check who did it. That was me. Okay. Just move it. Thank you. All right. Yeah, you, got the, you got the command on you. Uh, <laughs> walked away. Yep. So uh, everything comes out to 2041 without the Alexa Bliss. So I'll slide these over to Marlon and he'll kind of, uh, he'll kind of um, review whatever he wants to do. And then um, the offer on the Bliss is 1500 cash. Seeing what the there's a good comp on it, but at the same time, comps aren't like comps aren't set in stone. Like, if there's an Alexa, Alexa Bliss fan out there, they're gonna want the card, but I, I, you know, how much are they willing? Like realistically, you realistic, could, you could probably realistic, sell the card for two k. Realistic, I'll probably sell the card for two k. That's exactly yeah. One hundred percent, one hundred percent. So that leaves myself room to where I can still price it at twenty five hundred OVO. Price it in the store at twenty five hundred bucks, right? Yeah. Um. If somebody really wants it at that price, then you know I'll sell it. But it leaves me room to come down a certain amount and still be okay on it. But this is also a card that in you know six months from now, I you it's know it could down. be a thousand dollar card. You know it could be an eight hundred dollar card. I I'm not sure. But you can also look at like UFC debut. Twenty forty one. We got the number right. Yep. You can also look at like UFC debut edition from before. Like look at color blasts from. From that, you can see how those have hold, held up over the over the months because the product's been out for a long time. It's been out for a full year, so. So now we got our total number at 3541. I had an idea of what I want. Yeah. So now I'll come back if it's something that I, that that's fair. Usually I'll round it up, but in this case I'll tell Ryan, can you do 37? So Marlon wants 37, so that's uh, 100 and 159 dollars. Um, basically, I just can I justify $150? Can I, can I, can I be at 85 on that? Can I be at 130 on that? Can I add five to all these? And usually it just makes sense. So I'll just give Marlon a fist bump. Look at that. And Boom. Done. That was That's sick, it. dude. Was the buying process at yep. Burbank right there. That was it. That's, it. That's awesome. So these, these will go to, uh, these will go to Ray or these will go to Rob. Or if I'm not busy, I'll just, I'll just price these up. So where, so where do these go next? These, uh, I'm actually probably just going to slide these guys over here. And uh, once uh, once I get a break in the action, I'm just gonna price them up and just put them out. So just you're gonna price them and put them in the showcase. It's gonna go out before we close. Will those be new arrivals? Yeah, before we close today. So and if in like a half hour. One hundred percent of those are new arrivals. Yeah, one hundred percent of those are new arrivals. Wow. So they all go into the fresh showcases, and uh, everyone will have a chance at them. Is there anything like that where you wouldn't put in new arrivals, and then where would it go? Um. Yeah. I mean, like this stuff. This stuff might just go to uh, 
to the Beckett Marketplace. So this stuff might just go uh, straight online, yeah. not even touch the showcases. Um, you know, 10 OBO, 25 for 30 OBO. And uh, that'll also go to eBay, but you know, this kind of stuff, I'm not really gonna put this stuff out. It's, it's you know, a Triple H for $5. If, if I had it in one of the bargain bins, you know, someone probably would pick it up, but yeah. our, our philosophy is more, we, we like to get stuff um, instead of, we like to get the big stuff out, but as far as like the bargain bin stuff, we like to get this online yeah. uh, just because it does so well for us. Yeah. So that's, cool. that's going to be the strategy on that. Sweet. And the worst part is now i got to pay Marlon. Oh, so that's all right. That's the worst part. Good for him, best for me. Yeah, yeah there you <laughs> go. Appreciate you guys, man. Thank yeah. you. You got it, man. Appreciate you, dude. Yep. This is my beautiful mind kind of craziness, but every <laughs> card that comes through here goes through me. And there's a lot of cards. I mean, people are always shipping. This is stuff that people ship to us. Um, Sheer amount of crazy that's always stacked up here. We have a buy list actually on our website, on our Beckett Marketplace store. What we pay for serial numbered cards, game used cards. Not everybody knows about it, but we buy a lot of stuff through the mail. When's the last time you saw that? I've never seen this card before. Gala On Card Auto Steph Curry. Dude, is that sweet? What's it number to? Uh, it's 35. Wow. That's a big card that's you just card. handed me. Luca. You got the Luca. License to, draw, license to Dominate. Dude, wow. that's a bad man right there. That's, that's a bad man. Do you watch a lot of UFC? As much as I can. I love UFC, dude. So that's how it goes that's down at Burbank. Ryan's the guy, Ray Ray's the guy, and uh, they do a lot of buying here. So if you guys ever want to come do a deal at Burbank, you just saw it happen right there. Ryan is the guy to deal with. I um, hope you guys enjoyed this part of the video. If you didn't, uh, leave a like, comment, subscribe. Follow Burbank Sports Cards on Instagram and hit them up.